Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castle Keeper Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays I run a series of, uh, of videos for Castles and Crusades. On Tuesdays typically I am doing the character race spotlight uh, which this morning I'm going to be uh, showing off uh, the gnomes in Castles and Crusades. And on Thursdays, typically, I will do a, uh, a class spotlight, uh, which I believe I'm up to um, nights, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So um, without further ado, let's start taking a look at gnomes in Castles and Crusades. Now, first of all, I want to point out that, um, as you can see here on the image, this is the actual image of gnomes from the from the latest uh, player's handbook, uh, and uh, this is the this is the eighth printing of the player's handbook, and I believe that uh, there there even Troll Lord Games is even prepared to do a ninth printing. Now, one thing that's really important to remember is that uh, the content is not generally changed it's actually quite rare for the content of the uh, of the uh, books in castles and crusades to change going from one printing to the next what typically uh, occurs is is that there's a uh, you know there's a cover update there is art update or there's uh you know some errata you know corrections uh you know typos and those kinds of things or there's a um there's a formatting uh update uh, to make it a little bit more, uh, the information a little bit more accessible. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, you can run with any, you know, any printing of their core rule books after 2010, and uh, the rules typically are not going to change. So without further ado, let's start taking a look at the gnomes as a character race in Castles and Crusades. So here we go. Gnomes, gnomes are often mistaken for an offshoot species of dwarves or halflings. In fact, gnomes have more in common with elves for they are closely bonded to nature and its essence as much as elves are. Even the most renowned sages can only say that gnomes emerged long ago from primordial forests and from under the deep roots of massive trees. Small, uh, even by dwarven standards, gnomes have the potential to be powerful friends and deadly foes despite their size. Although partial to forests and mountains, gnomes can be found living in other remote locations as well. Afflicted with wanderlust, many gnomes are world travelers and enjoy visiting strange foreign lands in search of new information about the world in which they live. Description. The gnome is small in stature, averaging three foot six inches tall. They have ruddy earthen skin that appears dry and cracked with age, like an ancient mud flat. Gnomes have large long noses, and wide, gleeful eyes. Gnomes prefer dark, earthy-colored clothing, mixed browns and greens with the occasional deep-hued blue. They dress more extravagantly during festivals or celebrations in clothes of a wide array of colors and styles. Personality. Considered Pranksters or mischief makers in many circles, gnomes are generally more concerned with relaxation and mirth than with most other matters. The gnome is occasionally serious, although this demeanor is normally reserved for times of war and great stress. Even in these grave situations, gnomes remain light of heart compared to other races. Keenly intelligent, curious, and observant, gnomes involve themselves in all manner of travels and experiments to fulfill an unremitting curiosity. This thirst for knowledge often brings gnomes and their friends together in great concourse. 
Individuals, families, and clans gather from time to time to feast and make merry and pass news of the day. All are welcome at these gatherings, and it is not odd to see elves, halflings, dwarves, or even humans sitting amongst the gnomes and sharing stories and tales of great escapades. Gnomes are famous for their songs, dance, drinks, speeches, and many other disparate forms of entertainment. In fact, gnomes encourage others to sit at tables with them as they struggle to glean information from all and sundry folk. For this reason, gnomes are careful in their speech and possess great skills in extracting all manner of information from their guests, whether their guests intend to reveal it or not. These skills are not limited to civil conversations, but are as often used to glean secrets and even concessions from others. Conversely, gnomes are loath to give up information and rarely do so without a prize. Knowledge gained in this manner is rarely used for evil purposes, but, it's, but is tucked away for the proverbial rainy day. At such times, it is brought forth to the immense enjoyment of the gnome and often to the embarrassment of the victim. Gnomes, gnomes tend to be clannish, living in extended, roughly tightly knit family units. Although, I'm sorry, though tightly knit family units. These families are not restricted to blood relations or even to the race of gnomes. Once trust is given or earned, gnomes welcome friends of almost any race into the inner confidence. Their love of gatherings and their skills in storytelling help to bind these clans together through shared folklore and public exchanges of appreciation. Gnomes are encountered, uh, I'm sorry, gnomes are accounted as great craftsmen and they take pride in the creation of all manner of objects from musical instruments, exotic papers, and colorful inks to noisy clocks and other such goods. But their greatest craftsmen focus on religious edifices. These are large stone menhirs shaped and carved over decades and placed within sacred groves or upon windy heights. At these spots, gnomes gather on summer and winter solstices uh, to offer tidings onto their deities and thanks for lives well lived. All right. So that's a, that is something that is very, very uniquely Castles and Crusades, all right, which, which has, I believe, a greater tie to um, mythology and folklore than, uh, than any other uh, fantasy role playing game I have come across. Uh, so, and I think that has a lot to do with the uh, the credit uh, given to uh, you know both uh, you know both the Chanel brothers who have a you know a deep connection to history, um, you know professional training in history, you know, and and, and being uh, historians, and so. Uh, it really does come out here. Plus, they have other writers on their staff that also really delve into uh, the the proper reflection of uh, folklore and uh, and history in their uh, you know in their works. So let me continue. Racial affinities, preferring a simple and static world, gnomes are friendly with most of the other uh, most other most of the benign people. Sorry. I'm reading faster than I'm, I'm speaking faster than I'm reading. Let me restart. Perf preferring a simple and static world, gnomes are friendly with most of the benign peoples with whom they come into contact. Gnomes, however, have contentious relations with those who are destructive and aggressive. They particularly abho abhor goblins and kobolds gnome consider elves to be distant and elitist cousins they find dwarves marginally acceptable but wish they would quit digging so many holes in the earth before it collapses as for halflings and humans gnomes consider 
one just a shorter, more polite, and better fed version of the other. They typically relate well with both. Environment. Gnomes prefer wild regions that are peripheral to urban or settled lands, including mountain, high mountains, hills, deserts, forests, or more rarely, marshes. Racial traits and abilities. Animal empathy. The gnomish relationship with nature and its creatures allows them to communicate with burrowing mammals, badgers, fox, moles, rabbits, etc. The communication is more telepathic and empathetic than it is conversational, though posture and sounds can communicate emotions such as stress and fear. The information communicated must be relatively simple taking place on the animal's level of understanding and comprehension, not the gnomes. Um, so interesting way to role play that uh, as both a castle keeper and a player. Combat expertise, goblins and kobolds. Gnomes have battled goblins and kobolds in the forests and mountains and since the dawn of their race. Because of these frequent and bloody encounters, gnomes have developed techniques for fighting goblins and kobolds. Gnomes receive a plus one bonus to hit kobolds and goblins using handheld weapons in melee combat. Using missile weapons does not confer this bonus. Dark vision. In a similar manner to dwarves, gnomes can see in complete darkness up to 60 feet. Dark vision produces images that are a shade of gray, but it is otherwise like normal sight. Gnomes can function well with no light at all. Bright light, such as the form of a lantern or other light source, spoils dark vision. A gnome requires one minute to adjust his or her eyes when light source is extinguished before gaining full use of dark vision. Enhanced hearing. Gnomes have, a, have keen ears, often linked to those of a fox. No one knows whether this is due to gnome physiology or if it is because gnomes are such close observers of their environment. Gnomes receive a plus three bonus to all listening checks. Spells. Gnomes have an innate ability to cast the following spells once per day as a first level ca caster. Dancing lights, ghost sound, and prestidigation. These innate spells are in addition to any spells available to gnomes of spellcasting character classes. Their languages are common, dwarf, elf, gnome, goblin, and kobold. They're small. Their movement is 20 feet. Their typical classes are rogue, solutionists, druids, and bards. Their attribute modifiers are a plus one to intelligence, minus one to strength, and rogue and assassin modifiers are plus three to listening. All right, so there we have the... There we have the gnome race spotlight. So uh, once again, a, a very unique take on, uh, on a character race uh, found in Castles and Crusades. As, as I mentioned, I think it comes from uh, their, uh, the writer's connection to, um, you know, to history and you know, and folklore, and they utilize that. I mean, they have a whole series of codex uh, supplements uh, to uh, to the Castles and Crusades game system that really does tie in all of the the folklore and uh, and mythology of uh, you know throughout Europe. So it, it covers it covers both uh, you know. Celtic and Nordic and, uh, you know, Slav even Slavic as well, um, and Germanic, obviously. And then it also includes North African folklore and, uh, and that of the, you know, ancient civilizations of, of Greece and Rome and then Egypt and, and such. And they're, um, they do have a, a new book that is in, um, that is either in production or whatever. I know it was kickstarted, uh, and that is going to uh, tie in Chinese culture, uh, and uh, and hopefully someday they'll they'll include in a codex uh, 
um, Japanese or and and other you know other uh, regions as well of the world. So I'm really looking forward to that and uh, and their continued uh, emphasis on on putting on that real folklorish uh, mythological um, ties to castles and crusades. I think it's one of the things that makes this game system uh, so unique. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, this is going to uh, this is going to be uploaded and and become public actually tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So uh, that's when you'll be able to see it first. And then oh, excuse me. And then you will see the next character class, which I'm probably going to record right now uh, after this. Uh, you'll see the next character class. Uh, go up on Thursday morning, same time, 6 a.m. And I will try to keep that, uh, I will try to keep that uh, schedule. Uh, so uh, race spotlights on Tuesdays, class spotlights on Thursdays, and I will probably do those recordings uh, every Monday morning because that's the time that I have available to me. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, Please, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, it'll cost you nothing. Hit that alert button so that you'll get the alerts when uh, new videos uh, are uploaded. And uh, questions and comments are always welcome. If you have anything that you want me to take uh, a look at specifically with Castles and Crusades, this is the place to do it on is any of these Tuesday or Thursday videos. And then I, I do have to get back to doing some of the... Uh, some of the codex uh you know previews or, or first looks at uh it's been a little while since i've looked at one of those and uh i think celtic is is probably coming up next so i haven't i haven't looked at the mythology and folklore of the uh, of, of the celts and so that is kind of coming up next or very very soon and uh, as always i look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon and uh, you keep on gaming out there. Stay safe out there. Enjoy your uh, week as the weather is getting better and better uh, going into, uh, although it's kind of rainy here in New York. But as we get, you know, deeper into the spring and the weather gets a lot better out there, uh, remember to, you know, get some outside time and uh, maybe you'll see some gnomes in the wilderness as you go out there. So uh, enjoy. Have a great day.